Hey everybody, so I'm sitting here retexturing this classic drone model from RenderCrate, trying to give it some cool texture variations, and I realized we needed to talk about something really cool that Substance Painter can do that we've never really covered on the channel before. But really quick before we get to that, I've already started texturing this thing, and if you want to know how to retexture RenderCrate assets yourself, you can watch this video that we made a while back where I showed you step by step how to retexture our motorcycle asset. So today I want to show you guys how to use anchor points. A lot of people seem confused on what they are, what they're used for, and if you use Substance Painter, you should learn how to use anchor points. So anchor points are a way for layers, materials, and masks to reference other layers, materials, and masks. So that seems really boring and simple, but once I show you how it works, you'll see that the possibilities are just endless for really cool effects. So first, let me just show you what they are and kind of the most basic use for them. So I've got this retextured drone here, and I'm actually gonna turn off a few of the details so that what's going on here is a little bit less confusing and busy. So I've got a metal material, which looks like this, and on top of that, I've got a yellow paint material, which looks like this. But you'll see that the paint is being removed on the sharp edges of the model. And that's being done automatically or procedurally. Now the way that Substance Painter knows where to remove the paint is by using our baked mesh maps, which again we covered in that motorcycle video. But if I press B to cycle through my maps, we can look at curvature. And this is actually the map that shows Substance Painter where all of the edges of my model are. And that's how it knows where to remove the paint on the sharp edges. But let's say I wanted to add some detail because it's looking a little bit flat right here. To do that, I'm going to create a paint layer just a blank paint layer and I'll call it details. Now I put it at the bottom and that's very important because anchor points can only reference layers that are lower than them in the layer stack. So if you want all of the layers to be able to reference this detail that we're about to make, it helps to put it way at the bottom. So I'm gonna grab a nice normal detail to put on my brush and I'm gonna use this like a stamp and I'll stamp it right here. So now we have this really cool normal lap detail on the model and the light is reacting as if it's real geometry and real height information, but the paint layer doesn't recognize that it's there and it's not removing paint along the edges because again, if I go to my baked mesh maps, we didn't change the curvature and the curvature is what's driving this peeling paint. So we need the paint layer, the mask for the paint layer, to recognize this detail and to sort of trick it into thinking that it's real modeled geometry. So I'm going to right click on my details layer and at the bottom I'm going to click add anchor point. We can call this anchor point whatever we want, but I'll just leave it as details because that makes sense. Okay, now I'm going to go to my paint mask, which is right here. This is my paint folder. This is the mask that is driving the paint. And right now I have a generator called curvature, which is what's causing these chipped edges to appear. So I'm going to click on that generator where the edges are being made and I'm going to scroll down until I see use micro details. So like a little button that's really easy to miss. I'm going to click on true and then I'll scroll down and I see two new slots for textures. So once again, this curvature map is what's driving the edges. But now I have a micro normal and a micro height slot. So I can click on this and go to my anchor points tab and choose the details. And it says, which channel should we look at? Well, not the color, we wanna look at normal. And we can see just like that, the paint layer is recognizing that normal information. Now, just a quick tip, if you didn't use a normal brush, a normal map brush to create that detail and you used height instead, then you wanna do the same thing, but with the height channel. So what's really cool is now my dynamic generator can be adjusted and it's as if that detail is molded right into the surface and the paint is recognizing it. So that's kind of the most basic and most common use that I have found for anchor points. But this tool is really powerful and there's tons of possibilities. So let me show you a few other things we can do. So I've started with a fresh new scene here just so that we're not so overwhelmed by all the layers we had on that drone. So I've only got two layers now. I've got the basic steel underneath and then a paint layer on top. So what most people do if they want chipped paint is they go here and they find a smart mask or something and they just drop it onto the paint. Then you adjust your smart mask. Maybe I'll turn down the wear level just so we get some little chips. So now you see we've got some bare metal along the edges, which looks pretty cool. And then most people say to themselves, okay, paint's got a little bit of thickness, so I'll just go to my paint layer and I'll scroll down and maybe increase the height. So now there's a little bit of a lip to the paint, which does look cool, it does add detail, but what if I want the paint to get thicker as it gets towards the edge of the paint layer so it's not just a uniform thickness? And what that can do for us is actually simulate paint chipping and sort of peeling away from the surface. So what I'm gonna do is click on my mask for my paint and I'm gonna go here to add effect and I'm gonna choose add anchor point and we'll call this paint mask. And we can actually go back to our paint layer and turn the height back to normal because we're gonna create another layer just for height. So over here in your layer palette, you wanna add a fill layer and I'll call this paint height. Now in the material settings, I'm gonna turn off everything except the height channel. And then I'll turn the height up just a little bit, like maybe 0.1. 
or less. Now we didn't see anything change yet, but that's because we need to tell this new height layer to reference this anchor point from the paint mask from before. So on the paint height layer, I'm gonna right click and add a black mask, and then I'll add a fill to it. And inside that fill, instead of filling it with a color or a pattern, I'm gonna actually click on it and tell it to reference my paint mask anchor point. So now we're back to where we started before, where it just looks like the paint is a default thickness. And that's because if I alt click on my mask, I can see it's just copying my paint mask. So if I alt click on my paint mask, it looks the same as my paint height. But we can actually add effects to this paint height mask to make it sort of curl up at the edges. So I'm gonna click on the paint height mask, I'm gonna click on add effects and go to add filter. And then here in the filter, I'm gonna click on high pass filter. So notice what this does, it takes the border between the black pixels and the white pixels and it creates kind of a little gradient between them. And if I look at my material, you can see it's actually already starting to work. But we can refine this a little bit more. I'm gonna alt click on my mask again so I can see it. And then I'm going to add an effect, levels. And let's crush those midtones all the way down to black. So now you can see we have a gradient, a sharp gradient, ramping up towards the edge of the paint and then quickly dropping off where the paint ends. So let's go ahead and press M for material and we can see that it's starting to work now. The cool thing about this is we can refine it so I can adjust the midtones or the gamma to sort of sharpen it up if I want to. And I can also click on the high pass filter here and I can adjust the radius to sharpen it up or spread it out. But because it's dynamic, I can also go all the way back to my paint mask and I can add a new paint layer. Notice that I've kept the paint layer underneath the uh, anchor point. That's because the anchor point will only reference what's below it. So keep that in mind. But I can add a new paint layer and find a nice alpha and start removing some paint manually. And notice what happens here. It's kind of subtle, but notice that the surface of the paint seems to ramp up towards the edge and then quickly drop off as if the paint's peeling away from the surface. I can use something like this cracks brush. And then if you move the light, you can see it looks like it's peeling away. Now, if you want the effect to be more extreme, you can go to the paint height layer and increase the height. And now we get a really extreme paint peeling effect. So if I exaggerate it, you can see what I'm talking about. Now, what if we want the paint to actually be sort of faded along the edges? We can do that. I'm gonna go back to the paint height layer. And right now there's only height on this layer. So I'm gonna change it to also have color. And just to demonstrate, I'm gonna change it to some crazy color like bright green. And you can see that anywhere I paint, the edges will be bright green. But I'm gonna choose kind of a faded blue color. And again, remember that this is totally dynamic. So as long as I'm painting underneath the paint mask anchor point that we created, you can just sort of paint in real time and get that really cool dynamic effect. This also works incredibly well for things like engraving. So if I just turn on my anchor point and it just gives us some more interesting highlights to look at. And of course, it's still totally dynamic. Another thing it's really good at is scar tissue and other really cool organic skin details like that. So check this out. I'm just gonna sort of lightly paint here and you can see I get a really nice organic sort of nasty recently healing wound. So if I press really hard, I can see the under layer, but notice that the edge is kind of bumpy and nasty and stringy looking. So it's actually really simple. So I set it up exactly like I did with the paint, but if I look at my scar edges layer, which is the same thing as like the, the paint height chipping effect, notice that I have my anchor point and then the high pass filter and then the levels just like before, but then I added a warp to sort of crunch it up and a blur to make it more soft and organic. So once you kind of get the hang of anchor points and what they do, you can do some really cool, interesting effects. One last really cool example that I use it for is burned cloth and paper too. So it doesn't have to be just about height. I can use it to change the color. Uh, I am changing the height here, but I'm using it to change the opacity of stuff, changing the color, and I'm actually driving two layers. So you can layer up effects. You don't just have to have one interesting height layer. You can see I've got a charred edges and a burned edges. So the charred one is kind of this faded soft darkening. And then I've got little tiny crunchy details driven by the exact same effect. It might be kind of cool to also have like a glowing hot ember along the edge too. So if you have any other cool ideas for ways to use anchor points, be sure to leave them in the comments below. There are endless possibilities with this tool, so I know that you guys can come up with some really cool ideas that I haven't thought of yet. If you make anything cool with anchor points or the new updated drone textures, be sure to tag us on Instagram with it or post it to our Discord. Alright, later creators.